How's it going everyone? So today we're going to look at cross-chain bridges and how exactly they work. So we'll use some cool schematics so you guys can actually visualize it and understand it better. So what are cross-chain bridges and why do we even care? So back in the day, blockchains were actually completely independent of each other and they couldn't communicate with each other, right? So if you had assets on one blockchain and you wanted to use it on another blockchain, that wasn't possible. Then we got cross-chain bridges. This allowed different blockchains to actually communicate with each other. So you as the user had the flexibility of having an asset on one blockchain and then actually transferring it over to another blockchain where you might need it. In the future, blockchain interoperability is going to be huge. It's very much like cell networks, right? So whatever uh, service provider you use, you don't actually think about who the person is that you're calling, right? They might have a different network provider, but they've got these sort of bridges as well where they've allowed the different networks to communicate with each other. Okay, great. Let's actually have a look at how the cross-chain bridges work. All right, so we've got the two blockchains. So blockchain one will be Ethereum and blockchain two will be Solana. Now, the objective is that Kakashi wants to send one Ether from the Ethereum network over to the Solana network. So he's got one Ether on Ethereum, but he needs that asset on the Solana network. All right, so he's going to send his Ethereum on the first blockchain, so Ethereum, to a smart contract on the Ethereum network, right? That is essentially going to lock that Ethereum up, right? So he no longer has access to it. Then on the second blockchain, so the Solana network, we've got the Oracle or validator, right? Now the function of this Oracle or validator is actually to look at the smart contract and see when an asset has been locked up, right? So the objective is to see when someone has said, okay, I am prepared to lock my asset on Ethereum so that I can have it on Solana. Once the Oracle has um, certified that, yes, this person has in fact locked the asset in the smart contract, then it will release that token on the Solana network, right? And then that will go to Kakashi's account. Now, what's really important to understand here is you are not actually sending the asset from Ethereum over to Solana, right? You are merely taking that Ether you're locking it into a smart contract on the Ethereum network. And then the Solana network is looking to see when someone locked that asset up. And then it releases a token which represents that Ether on the Solana network, right? So the Ethereum here is actually just a token. It's not like the actual Ether that you have on the initial blockchain. The big thing here is that you're actually requiring trust to say that this person is in fact going or this smart contract is going to lock that ether up and then they're going to give it to you on this blockchain that's why all of these cross-chain bridges do have um, high auditing so that all of this is validated and the trust is maintained all right guys and that's it on how cross-chain bridges work if you got some value from this video definitely subscribe to the channel and like the video